I get the podium. I want to greet the convention <clears throat> once again. I'm going to be solid then because I'm here. And I'm continually here. Uh, but this is my home church and where I labor the hours I do. And uh, I appreciate these men of God that have come to aid, to assist, to strengthen, and to give us the proper ingredients that we need as a local church, a local ecclesia, a local assembly in the body of Christ, uh, in the many membered body of Christ. And um, I want to express before I begin any type of words or ministry or even uh, trying to steer the church uh, toward uh, where God would allow me to sense the Holy Ghost and you to sense it and our sensory uh, perception be where God would lead us to speak as men of God uh, to you and God would use you. I know this last night uh, men of God spoke and God blessed them at a wonderful opening night and uh, just it was tremendous and God used several of our elders, our ministers and they brought forth the word and I'm asked by our dear brother that's here for the first time, uh, Brother Douglas Klein, sitting right here, and he gave us that tremendous message and compassion and uh, caring for the, deep, the need, the dying, the lost, the witness of Christ. My brother Klein, do you, uh, brother that haven't met him, his first meeting, he's ever been among us. And, uh, the Klein labored for two <coughs> years in the ministry. Uh, a good percentage of it at time with the Church of God, am I correct in that? Cleveland, Tennessee. And uh, his ministry was valid. He was in Africa uh, laboring there. And he's labored uh, 30 years among the Navajo and the uh, different Indian tribes in the western part of our country, uh, the United States has a great, tremendous ministry there, 30 years in school, and uh, was telling us about some of those experiences with the community that most of us don't touch base with very well, even though uh, they're part of America, and they are the Native Americans. Amen. They were here before uh, the Pilgrims landed uh, in New England and founded the New England colonies. Uh, they were here. Yeah, but we don't know them. I, I confess, I do not and have had little experience. Uh, the Seminoles are here in Florida. Uh, they have never signed a peace treaty with the United States. Uh, I don't think they ever will. Uh, they live in the Everglades and down in the southern part of the state. They're a sovereign nation still, as they were. And, um, but uh, we're unacquainted with them somewhat. But not intimately, as Brother Klein was describing. She was describing this ministry uh, to the Indian nation of our country, the Navajos, and those uh, tribes. And I certainly enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed his experience in Africa, describing the king uh, that God so wondrously came into his heart, the president of the Navajo nation uh, that uh, he found they prayed with him, and the president found God, found Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So this meeting started off with a wonderful reading in it, and I appreciate uh, these uh, dear men of God. And then I believe it's Brother Lazarus, uh, where is he now? I'm looking at him. Here, right down before me. Brother Lazarus, first time, and later on in the meeting, he'll say something, I'm sure. He's from India, and... Uh, I'm certainly thrilled to have him. The Samuel did not get to make it this year from India, uh, but we are happy to have Brother Lazarus. And then to see the familiar uh, men of God, the giants of the Word of God, the Scriptures, the work of God, uh, coming in through the night uh, and uh, introduced a lot of the men last night. Uh, but Brother Isaac Jerry came in tonight, uh, last night from Pittsburgh. The work of Uh, Brother Emmanuel Luna came in from West Africa, Liberia, and this is his second uh, convention with us. 
And then Brother Ruth Tibby, she can refuse to marry with her voice to be this morning. And there's several with them of their contingent of the Nairobi Assembly. And uh, we're very happy, in fact, a, the doctor's with you on this, at this meeting. The medical doctor over here, you're right, here he is. And there is the Nairobi Assembly. And, the Kenya, and that work is blossoming and blooming. and. Uh, Brother Tibby was telling me he's adding a balcony now in that huge or large auditorium uh, just to accommodate the coming Easter convention. I believe it begins on the 29th, does it? The 29th of, of uh, this month. And uh, they anticipate a huge swelling of people from all over the world there, Kenya, the African continent, and then outside of that, Europe, and even hopefully from the United States, uh, that, uh, and I've enjoyed those meetings in Nairobi many times. And here, uh, we're welcoming them. We, we're very happy to see uh, Brother Retivia and Sister Retivia again with us. They've strengthened us for many years here now. Come. Our meeting is very close to their meeting, and yet uh, he's made the sacrifice to be here. Only has just a few days between now and the getting ready for that meeting there, I appreciate Brother Tiddy, uh, your coming and being with us. And then I introduce Brother Alexander, our minister from Costa Rica, uh, here <coughs> last night. He's an attorney also, and uh, he's pastor now in Costa Rica. He wasn't, when I met him the first time in Costa Rica, uh, Brother Alexander sat in a teaching class, and his eyes were open, and he bonded to my spirit, tied to his. He was under another ministry there at that time. But God talked to him, he moved out from under the covering of that ministry, as, as a legal profession, as I said, but he felt led of God to begin a free, open assembly in Costa Rica, and it's growing, it's growing by leaps and bounds, and God is blessing. We're very happy to have these men of God with us. I introduced the other pastors here from all over the nation last night. I, hope I, didn't, I couldn't possibly cover everybody, but I did cover a girl. Arlene came in last night from Miami, Miami Gardens, and uh, we were happy to have them and his in this morning uh, from uh, Miami. And there will be others coming in from Orlando today and different places. And brother, yes, brother Joseph Garrett. My goodness, how could I not say something about West Palm? Right across from us, 186 miles, I think. And we've got to make the tracks between Brayton and West Palm more at the rest of this year. I'm glad to see you and your good wife down here. The first one, uh, West Palm Beach. I think Sister Judy Williams will be here. Brother J.D. Williams' wife, to the former pastors there, your mentor. And Sister Judy talked with me on the phone. I think she's coming in. If she's not in, I don't see her now, but uh, I think she's coming in uh, before the meeting is over. And we'll be happy to see her and all of God's people, so many of our friends. You know, it's a wonderful feeling to look around once a year and see you have so many friends. Yes. You know what Satan does to a minister through the year? He tries to beat him up and tell him he's losing friends. People are against him. They're not for him. Any of you men ever have those fellows come around like that? <laughs> mentally? Talk to you mentally? Mm -hmm. You know, you're not, if, you, if you continue to try to go the path you're going, uh, you're not going to have any friends. Uh, uh, people, you, you'll lose out. I, I'm the only one that ever had that, I'm sure. But, but, but uh, you know, uh, I can tell you this. Over the last 25 years of my ministry, God has proved to me that I will have friends, and I will have those who love me, and I will have those who pray for me. And God has driven Satan back and defeated him I, over a quarter of a century now. God has proven that despite any attack that can be made, God still is in control. What is the name of the Lord? God is still in control. God is still in control. And uh, so it encourages me to see this tremendous amount of friendship and fellowship from all over. Brother Darrell Embry came in last night with Mike Willis up here from uh, up in Kentucky and, and the assembly there. 
uh, near Louisville. And uh, I, I, I got a little blank on me right now. I'm not calling this. Shout out the name back there, brother. Right? Brandenburg. How can I forget it? I did. But anyway, uh, we're, we're very happy uh, to have uh, you with us and Brother Embry and those from Brandenburg and the rest of God's people that have come in, are coming in still, uh, they're still coming in, and we are thankful the Waycross Assembly, the great Alpha Zealous, and the Brother Carr, the Carr's not in yet, is he? And he'll be in. So we're, we're happy about, that's a new assembly, that we just opened up the fellowship uh, through Brother Rosales being up there working, and we're thankful. So I want to just let you all know, that, uh, before I say anything else, I'm grateful. Um, Bradenton uh, is, is a packed uh, city right now. We probably have nearly 100,000 visitors here from across the United States. Uh, the IMG International uh, Tournament is here, uh, the Freshman Training Academy we have here for athletes, and uh, there's a stock car race, there's a beach ball tournament, there's, uh, there's a rolling international competition uh, if, if, so they packed in here. If we fail to accommodate you properly on a motel, just give us a chance and we'll try again. And if we're limited where you're staying, let us know. And we'll be working at it. Our ushers are back here to serve. And uh, I think you received the little brochure. Uh, how many did not get this yet? I want you to have this as information. If you didn't get it, uh, ushers take a good look and see if the hands are being held up. And here's one back here for the Marion Stamps to stay on. So I've told Brother Marion, God bless you. And be sure you get one of these. They're just uh, information reading, and uh, you can read it. I won't have to announce it. And go through that. <coughs> you don't have one of these. Uh, ask an usher uh, for it. And then you're welcome to our literature table in the back back there if you want to partake of the books and the uh, items of interest there. Um, we, uh, we certainly welcome all the ministry here. I hope no one, no one feels left out or insecure or any of those feelings we sometimes develop in what we call the church or the ministry. And believe me, after uh, 62 years of ministry, uh, I was started pastoring when I was, or attempting to pastor. How could a, how could a 17 year old boy pastor a church? Uh, but uh, anyway, I attempted it. At 17 years old, a sawdust floor building, 24 feet wide and uh, 30 feet long. And uh, I carried my army cot with me in the back of my car so I could have a motel that night. And I slept on the platform of the church after the meeting was over. And uh, I'd had good sawdust for old sawdust preaching uh, days, and I had a congregation of a hundred mosquitoes and five saints. And it was uh, you know, and the, and the mosquitoes were very active, and they kept everybody alive and coming home. And uh, the uh, congregation provided and enjoyed my preaching. Uh, but from that time on till this, I can tell you by experience. Uh, Laban said to Jacob, when Jacob was wanting to leave him in the book of Genesis, I believe it's the 30th chapter or so, he said, don't leave me, don't go. Uh, Jacob, don't go. He said, I've learned by experience, I have learned by experience that I am blessed because of thee. And the greatest thing that a minister accumulates in his years of ministry is experience. Uh, experience is the best teacher, sometimes painful, sometimes emotionally moving, but the best teacher. I've learned by experience that I'm blessed because of this. I want to say a few things about being tremendously lengthy, and the meeting is open for the brethren, and I want the brethren to take hold, I want the saints to take hold, and I said last night whether God chooses to speak through a woman, uh, whether he chooses to speak through a man, that's masculine and feminine, gender. Actually, God discounts the gender 
the moment the Holy Ghost comes in and starts anointing the lips, God forgets about the gender. It's just God speaking through clay vessels. That's what it is. Uh, so if you've got an argument with a woman being anointed, you've got a problem. If you've got an argument with a man being anointed, you've got a problem. If you've got an uh, argument with a child being anointed, God anointed Samuel when he was but a child. God anointed David when he was but a stripling. So God takes precedent over our bigoted feelings or our opinions or our ideas. Aren't you glad God takes precedent over our bigoted feelings or our opinions or our past learnings or our past teachings? God takes precedent over that. If he chooses to speak through a donkey, then he can. You know, he can do that. Uh, God is God is capable of wrestling the mulberry trees, and getting uh, that's a sign from God. So he can use vegetation, he can use animal husbandry, he can use uh, feminine, he can use masculine, he can use a boy, a girl. God takes no back seat to anything I form, shape, or get against people. God moves it out of the way, and God allows His Spirit to do what man cannot do. So the argument, and you're never at the mercy of uh, someone with an experience is never at the mercy of someone with an argument. Keep that in mind. Um, I, I want to go to the 12th.